Praise the Lord, everyone. Shine back with another video for you all. Um, today, I actually wanted to do a video concerning the topic rape. Um, some would hold that the Bible actually forces a woman to marry her rapist, as well as, I guess because so, the Bible actually condones rape. Now, you know, we know for us, who know God and we understand this is not the case. So we're just going to look at this passage that um, some people might get that idea from. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verses 28 through 29. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin which is not betrothed and lay hold on her and lie with her and they be found then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. So some people will look at these two verses and say, okay, well, a man came across a woman and unfortunately had his way with her and because of that you know now i guess this woman has been tainted so now you know she's forced to marry this man who just kind of imposed forcibly his will on her and they will say see the bible condones rape and the bible condones a woman having to marry her rapist but you know we're about context here let's make sure we understand what's going on um and this is no different than the video that I, a, few, a few few videos ago, I did uh, one about the, the, the Bible condone slave slavery and the slavery in which, you know, we tend to, we tend to think about today as far as people being uh, captured and, and forced to, to do inhumane labor. And um, Exodus 21, 16 says that he that stilleth the man and selleth him or he be found in his hand, he should be surely put to death. That right there just shows you that the Bible doesn't doesn't condone slavery because it lets you know if you steal it someone, that means you take something that's not yours, you forcibly take it. So how how does the Bible condone that when it, it literally says the total opposite in, in Exodus twenty one sixteen? And we're gonna see the same type of thing here in this passage. We're gonna actually read we're going to back up to verse 23 of the same chapter 22. Okay, so real quick, we're just going to go through this. <clears throat> it says, if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed, and, be and betrothed, or to be betrothed is just um, an arrangement, an arrangement to be, to be married. Okay, so if a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her, then they shall bring both them out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his wife's, his neighbor's wife. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. But... Now there's a, a contrast. If a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. But until the damsel thou shalt do nothing, there is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this, is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. Now, we're just gonna, we're just gonna just kind of see the, these two scenarios that's going on here. It says in the very beginning, it says that if a man finds a, a virgin, you know what that is, to be betrothed to a husband, that means that this this virgin woman. As is in an arrangement and an agreement to be married to this man and then another man comes and finds her or comes across her and they ended up having you know premarital sex 
it says that they are both to be stoned. Now, why are they why are they both to be stoned? Because it says that she cried not. Now, why 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 is it that she cried not? That that is an issue that the woman is going to be stoned. It, you know, doesn't it? Isn't it the man that that did the wrong? Well, in this scenario, the fact that she didn't cry not that she cried not. It indicates that it this was consensual. This was a consensual hookup, quote unquote. Okay, this woman was already in an agreement to marry, be married to a particular man. She, you know, however they met up she, with this other man, they ended up having relations, and it was consensual. It says she cried not. Because of that, they both are stoned. Okay, but then if you look at 25, there's a but. The first word, but, that lets you know, okay, now on the opposite side, on the flip side. Now on the flip side, if this same thing, if this same thing happens, and notice it says, it says the man forced her. You see in, in 23 and 24, it's nothing about the woman being forced. She didn't cry out or nothing. But in 25, it says she was forced forced and it says how only the man will die and then in 26 it elaborates a little more um it says it says there was nothing nothing wrong that the damsel did that was worthy of death and in 27 it says how the how the damsel cried but there was no one around to hear her or no one around to save her so the fact that she cried lets you know what that this was not consensual. Okay, if if someone is crying out, that means something is wrong and they're they're vocalizing that they need help in that manner. By not crying out, this is this is a reference to, you know, you're okay with what's going on. You know, you it's consensual. So in that regard, because she cried out and, you know, unfortunately she was, she was forced to have relations with this man. She cried out, but no one was around to save her. She did nothing wrong because she did not go along with this willingly. She was forced. That's why in this scenario, only the man is stoned, but not the woman. See, in the first scenario, both of them were stoned and this one is only the man. So that right there alone shows you that the Bible does not in any way, excuse me, condone rape in the least. So when we go to 28 and 29, what's going on here? Well, let's just read it again. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin. Now notice there's a difference here, which is not betrothed. So in the in the in the first two, we actually see that um, that the woman is is betrothed. I mean, she's in an agreement to be married to a, another man. Here, in this scenario, she's a virgin, but she's not in in an agreement to to be married. And it says, and lay hold on her and lie with her, and they be found. Now notice nothing about her crying out. We got to remember that makes a big difference whether she cried out or not. That reference consensual or non-consensual. That's that's the difference. Okay, so 29, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel's father 50 shekels of silver and she shall be his wife because he hath humbled her and he may not put her away all his days. So essentially this man and woman, this woman who was not betrothed, she wasn't in an agreement or an arrangement to be married, had relations with a man who was not her husband. And it was consensual. So in this particular scenario, this this man will have to pay out, it says, 50 shekels of silver to the to the to the woman's father. Now, you know, it's a it's a big thing for a woman to be tainted. We have to think when when 
Mary was found to be with child, what did this what did the Bible say Joseph was going to do? He was going to put her away privately. He was going to put her away privately because she was with child. Okay, he was going to marry her. Right, either they were married or he was or he was going to get married. In either case, they were in a relationship and it would have seemed as such that hey, she had a relationship outside of their relationship and you know, you don't want to be with a with a tainted woman. And so for this father, you know, you for a a woman to be known to have been tainted, no one is going to want to you know, you can't really give your daughter off like that. So in this particular scenario, the man is to pay the father 50 shekels. And now this man is to take on this woman now because, you know, you did the deed. So, you know, you, you know, you, you have to be with her now. So it's not even a thing of just to say, well, this woman is forced to go with this man. No, this man because of what they did consensually, this man also has to be with this woman. You know, he has to pay her. According to the law, he has to pay the father. And now they're together. So it's not just a one-sided thing. So, um, you know, I just wanted to show that, you know, the Bible in no way, shape, or form condones rape. And it does not condone a woman being forced to marry her rapist. Okay, it is the total opposite okay we've seen a scenario if a woman who is betrothed ends up consensually having relations what happens to them both what happens if she's forced and she cries out what happens then and then what happens if she's not betrothed and it's consensual so we see these different these different scenarios and that the outcome of these different scenarios but nowhere does the Bible condone, you know, rape. So I just wanted to just take this time out to do this video. And again, you know, I don't care how educated someone seems, you know, kind of what they say, how good they talk, you know, for people who, who try to discredit God's word, you know, make sure you go behind them and just understand that, you know, God, we, we, we know who God is. Okay. We understand. And all we have to do is read his word just to be equipped to be able to give an answer for these things. You know, that's all we just pray. We read, you know, we listen to other, you know, good sound teachers, but you know, let's make sure that we contend for the faith and, and, and just to do what we can to do our part in this battle out here, this spiritual battle that we're fighting. So I pray that God got the glory first and foremost out of this. And I pray this and blesses any and all who comes across this video. It edifies you. And until next time, I love you all and God bless.